Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time stopping by. Today I'm sharing with you my monthly show and tell. So if you want to hear about all of the things I've been up to, the things I've been enjoying and doing and reading and so forth, then stick around. Let's get into it. I like to kick off my monthly show and tell with memories. And there was a few fun things. I will try to share some photos or footage if I can of some of the things that I've been up to. But one of the things that Peggy and I got to do in November, just near the end of the month, was go to a very local little Christmas festival that was happening here. It was called Holly Days and it was really cute. We went, we walked around. It was a lot of fun. I haven't been to a market like that in what feels like forever. So it was really fun to just see the different vendors, talk to people, see all the wares and the goods and um, wander and look at the lights. It was very crowded though. It's one thing that I feel like, I, I'm not great with crowds to begin with, but I feel like post, you know, worldwide pandemic, I feel like my tolerance for crowds has gotten even less if that was possible. So it was fun, but it was crowded. Uh, I did take a little bit of footage. I'll try to insert some of it in this clip. So let me just show you what I was able to put together. Kind of like a mini, a mini vlog. Here you go. What are we vlogging? Peggy and I are going to a little Christmas market, but we're not gonna spend any money. She thinks we're not spending any money, which is so adorable. Anyways, we're going to this little Christmas market that is right up the street from where we live. Um, so we're gonna go check it out and it's minimal see. expectation. It's, it's a one evening. It's not a big market. Yeah, it's a one evening only, like small little local thing, but we're gonna check it out. And if I have the wherewithal, I maybe will record some footage. We shall see how I do. She's yawning already. It's like five o'clock in the evening. Oh, I'm sorry, you're boring. We found parking. We found parking. So now we are walking over. It's like this whole, oh wait, this whole strip. It's like a going a half stretch, just all on one side. Yeah, it should be fun. We got cookies. Cookies. Who's the Show the bag of cookies. Who's the prize for our first purchase is cookies? Nobody. <laughs> Look, we found reflection. We found your favorite bookstore of all time. You know I'm coming through here. How's it going, Melissa? Hi. How's it going? She's I'm right, right there. Here. Yes. <laughs> I am right here. I'm on the Respect cookies. We're vlogging a little bit. <laughs> Are we going our favorite place? Not live? Yeah, it's not live, but I'm supporting. <laughs> Is this the first year they did this? The second year. Oh, yeah, it's so yeah. fun! This is amazing. They're so cute. Look at the little nuances. All the lights are right in it. I know, it's really cute. Look at it, it's Woodwick candles again. Uh huh. I have to smell some of them before we go away. Okay. Where do you ship to? Anywhere in Canada and the US. Really?
Do you want it? Are you gonna buy it for real? I mean, must have friends like we do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She All is that person. Are like, there yeah. I'm getting this one. Let me see. <laughs> okay. All right. You do you, boo. Just a couple of candles, but in my defense, Peggy bought two candles also. I bought two candles, but I'm happy to show later. You'll Hers love them. Hers were cheaper than mine. But well, mine were better. I would strongly mine are amazing. Strongly disagree. Let's I go. I got upstairs. the world's most amazing candles. Um. Anyways, we grabbed some kettle corn. No. Yeah, kettle corn. Kettle corn and Jamaican and patty. Jamaican spicy beef patty and a curry chicken patty. Yeah. So we have food. And it's very crowded, and I'm not great in crowds, but I was a trooper. And I only shopped a little. Right? Right? Okay, listen. Considering I bought two items. Watch your step. Just two items, plus food. Oh, two. We got, yeah, two candles. Everything else is food. We got cookies. That's food. Food. Other than the holidays market, I feel like November was really nose to the grindstone time for me. I was getting a lot of work done, especially in the first half of the month, on the book that I'm writing for Llewellyn, which now has an official title. It's going to be called Unlocking the Tarot, Create Your Own Keys. So I'm very excited. I hopefully will have a cover to share with you soon-ish, um, but the book's not due out for quite a while yet. So keep your eyes peeled for more updates. But for the first half of November, I was working on the editorial revision phase. So this is like an editing phase where the content gets refined. I added a lot. I took away a few things. I sort of like just, it's a perfecting stage, I guess you could say. It's like the stage where you sort of just make it better. It's past the rawness of the initial manuscript. And so I was doing a lot of that work. My deadline for that was actually near the end of December, but I got it in about a month early, which made me very happy. So I got that done, which is great. And I also put the finishing touches on my first draft of the Unicorn's Journey Tarot Guidebook. If you are new to my channel or you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm creating a tarot deck. It's called the Unicorn's Journey Tarot. I'm hoping for it to hit Kickstarter in the spring, early spring, like early, early spring if possible. Um, so I'm getting a lot of work done on that, which has been really great. So I was able to get that done and submitted to an editor to be reviewed. So that's all got done, really. I would say in the first half to two thirds of the month. And those were big to do's for me that had been just sitting on my plate for a while. So I'm so stoked that I was able to get those done. I also got some contracts in place for future projects and I will be talking about those as soon as I can. But for now, just trust and believe I am doing more things and I'm very excited about those things. And I'm terrible at keeping secrets. So I'm gonna try to just zip it right there. But in other news, um, Peggy and I were wandering around our neighborhood here, just like walking the dogs like normal, and we spotted a, an owl. And not just like an owl way in the distance, like high up in a tree. Like we, we, we initially spotted the owl like right across the street from where we were, sitting on a tree branch, but kind of close to the sidewalk. So because we were curious, we he just seemed to be hanging out. So we crossed the street with our dogs, who thankfully didn't notice, or they probably would have barked at the owl and the owl would have left. But we were able to get really close and the owl at one point, he just kept like staring at us. And at one point he like sort of flew to a little low fence nearby that was even closer to us and just kind of hung out. And I swear, Peggy practically had to drag me away from that spot because I did not want to move. I had never been that close to an owl in the wild before. Peggy and I have visited like a wild bird sanctuary that's in our area. And we got to see some owls and other birds of prey and such pretty close up, but never like wild like this where it just was like, hanging out and it was dark it was raining and so visibility for I think like the dogs and us wasn't great but I tried to get a photo it's terrible I'll put the best photo I can find on the screen if I can find a decent enough one and show you what we were seeing we're still not 100% sure like what kind of owl it was so if you have any thoughts let me know in the comments so that brings us to youtube -y things now I've changed up this segment a little bit actually I used to talk about all the things I've been watching and enjoying but I've sort of branched that off into a, a new video which I'm going to be talking about um Actually, my, this is a good point to talk about it. It is a YouTube -y favorite, but it hasn't happened yet. So um, I have been working in November on a new series I'm bringing to the channel called 
tarot, tidbits, and takeaways. The premise of this video series is going to be to bring you the things that have been really catching my attention. I consume a lot of tarot content, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook groups, my own Facebook group, there's always a lot of stuff going on. And I just thought it would be really fun to sort of create a series where I share with you the things that I've discovered, stumbled upon, learned about, whether I found them myself or other people have brought it to my attention. And on that note, um, I have been taking some volunteers. So if you are interested in participating, hit me up with a DM or an email and I will get you the information. But essentially, I've asked anybody who feels like they wanna contribute to just drop me a note whenever they find something that could be of interest for this series. You'll have a better idea of what the heck I'm talking about when the first video comes out, which is gonna be very, very soon like ideally in the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled on the space. I'm really, really stoked for it. I kind of like to think of it almost like a tarot community news kind of thing, but it's things that catch my attention, things that seem interesting, whether it's new tags being created in the community, really interesting videos being made. It gives me an opportunity to sort of share some of the channels that I think don't get a lot of like visibility because algorithms on social media just kind of suck. So I wanna be able to share some of those creators with you that I enjoy and that I like watching or taking in their content, but also things like if I find out a new deck is in the works and you want to be able to follow the progress on Instagram or something. So the idea is to just sort of get you in the loop on all the things that I've kind of found out about in the month. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be an interesting video to film. I'm probably going to film the, it, like right after I film this. So I'm curious what it's going to look like. I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of like me talking and like sharing pictures or like video feeds of what I'm talking about. That's kind of how I'm conceptualizing it, but I haven't done it yet. So I would love once it comes out to get some feedback from you on what you think of it and what you think of the format. And of course, if you're interested in being a volunteer and keeping me posted on things you find out about, also cool, drop me a line. I'll get you hooked up with the details on how to submit information to me for the series. Otherwise, there were some fun things that happened on YouTube for me in the month of November. Namely, we had a new episode of Three Fat Readers at the end of the month, which was awesome. We created a new tag called Thankful Tarot 23. The idea of this is we think we're gonna kind of start a little tradition for ourselves. Like, so Three Fat Readers is the collab channel with me, Danny Mystic, and Dustin of Modern Metaphysique. And we thought it would be fun to have like this opportunity to sort of reflect on the decks that we're thankful for that year for various reasons. So we did that live uh, in November and I will link that as well as everything else I'm talking about down below for you. But it was a fun little tag and I like the idea of kind of having a little three fat readers end of year tradition or near end of year tradition. So we'll see, like no promises, but it could be a thing. So like next year's would probably be thankful tarot 24 and so on and so forth. So very excited about that. It was a lot of fun. And if you missed it, Peggy and I got up to some craziness in November. We had a ton of fun doing this. So this, there's a whole story behind it and a lot of details. Let me give you the Reader's Digest version. So in October, actually, Peggy and I were doing a live hot takes. And during that live, we came across the deck, The Invisible Tarot by Los Garabeo. And Peggy had this epic rant and it was really fun and funny. And we were, it was all in good fun, but essentially just kind kind of teasing out the idea of an, an invisible tarot, essentially a blank tarot deck with borders and titles. And we were just kind of talking about that and the price and all this kind of stuff. After that live stream, Peggy was like, oh my gosh, Lisa, you know what we should do? We should buy a blank tarot deck because those exist. You can buy just a straight up blank tarot deck for like 10 bucks on Amazon, okay? We're gonna buy a blank tarot deck and then we'll walk through it like it's a real deck. Like we'll just make up like what we're seeing. I thought this was the wildest idea. So of course I said yes, because why not? It was gonna bound to be a lot of fun. And then I had the brainiac idea <laughs> to call it the emperor's new tarot. So Peggy has been like chomping at the bit to film this video. I got in the blank deck, which is right here, by the way. I will also have li this linked down below because this is actually pretty great for a blank tarot deck if you wanted one. Um, I'll talk more about that when we get to the decks at the end of the video. But in any case, uh, if you missed that video, it is a surprise this or that. And the name of the deck the Emperor's New Tarot is somewhere in the title, like I think near the end. But if you scroll my channel, you'll find that. It was a ton of fun to film that. I learned that I'm really bad at improv and really had to follow Peggy's lead. We did not pre-script or plan what was gonna be on the cards. We just literally made it up as we filmed. And it was freaking hilarious. It was so much fun to film. It was so much fun to get your, your reactions. It wasn't really meant to be like, like an April Fool's joke, so although we got a lot of comments that it should be like an April Fool's thing. I, it wasn't really so much to prank so much as to just have fun making stuff up as we went along. 
But it was really fun to get y'all's reactions and to see that you had a lot of fun with it as well as we did. So that was really great. I did have to trim the video significantly because there were so many times that I just would like burst out laughing to the point where I was almost crying. I almost fell off my chair, literally multiple times during the filming of that video. I did manage to take the behind the scene version because what I had done is filmed, put my camera up and filmed it while Peggy and I were doing the top down portion for that video. And uh, we put that up for Unicorn Fam channel members uh, of all tiers so that they could check that out. There was a lot of like little like behind the scenes inappropriate commentary. One of the reasons why that lives over there and not on the public channel, but it was, it was, so much fun. It was so much fun. And to all of those of you who played along, who like watched the video and were like, oh my gosh, I didn't spot this or I didn't spot that. Um, I love you. That was the entire reason we wanted to do it. And it was so much fun to have people playing into it and playing along and just like adding their commentary and things they saw on the cards and hilarious. But if you were confused by that video, that is the backstory. That is the reason you saw us talking about a blank deck and all the wild things we were seeing on it. It was just for fun, literally make-believe, but we had a blast and it was, it was an interesting exercise for me and like just kind of like going with the flow and not, I don't know, it was, it was wild. It was a wild experience. If you missed it, even though I've just kind of spoil, spoiled the, the punchline of it, check it out because it's pretty hilarious. So that was a lot of fun. Um, other things Peggy and I got up to, we got some new podcast episodes up. If you don't know, Peggy and I have a fun little couple-y chit chatty podcast that we created. We do the episodes on YouTube, but we also put them on Spotify and Apple Music or podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the places, Anchor FM, etc. Um, but we have a podcast called Lisa and Peggy Unleashed, and we talk about all kinds of things. We talk about like, am I the asshole stuff on Reddit? We talk about couple things. And we did a couple episodes in November talking about two things, both wage gap relationships and age gap relationships. So there were two episodes that I thought were really, really good. Definitely go check them out. And then we have some other fun episodes from November as well. But I will link those two episodes specifically down below for you if you're interested in seeing what the podcast is all about and what we do there. But it's mostly just Peggy and I sitting on the couch having conversations and sharing them with you all. So I really enjoy it. It's really fun. We've been doing it now for three or four months, I think maybe not that long. It's pretty new still, but it's really nice to just, and I don't edit those videos. Like I just get to sit down, talk to Peggy and she does all the work, like the editing, the uploading, all the things. And it's fantastic. So I really enjoy just getting to sit and chat and not having to do any of the behind the scenes stuff. It's amazing. So anyways, go check that out if you get a chance. And I think that's it for what I've been up to on YouTube in November. Let's talk about a couple of magic -y things. So I uh, actually got in the uh, October, oh, this is so awkward to show you, but this is the, no, this is the November Witch's Bounty box and it was a Moonstone themed box and oh my gosh, this pendant, so pretty. So I did just subscribe for the one month because I really wanted to see what they put together with a Moonstone themed box, one of my favorite stones ever and I'm obsessed with this pendant. It actually has Moonstone and White Topaz in it, but there's one, two, three, four Rainbow Moonstones and three white topaz in this setting. Obsessed. I've been wearing it ever since it came in. So I love, love, love that. And other crystal things I also brought home. Um, I think this is actually towards the end of October technically, but I got my first piece of scolocyte. And this is what the scolocyte looks like. I don't know if my lighting is going to do it justice. I might leave it out on the table for when I go top down. But scolocyte is this really, really cool. It's really cool in person. You can see these like layers to it because it's sort of a um, needle-like based mineral slash stone, but I love this kind of shape size of stone. I have a lot of stones in this form factor <laughs> because I find them really great for holding, for working with. I really love palm stones. They've turned out to be my favorite format other than a couple of my original like beefy points like my quartz. But I really love the scolocyte. It's got this very calming zen-like energy to it. It's not sleepy to me like um, howlite is, but it's very calming and very soothing to hold. And what the little paper, this I got this actually from a little shop in my area. And the paper just says scol scolis, I can't say it. Scolicide is a zeolite crystal that grows in thin long needles, an ideal support for those who wish to enhance meditation, sleep more peacefully or dream more sweetly. It carries the energy of inner peace and brings a deep sense of serenity and calm. And I like that word sweet or sweetness with this, stone because it feels again like zen like and calm and sweet but not heavy or sleepy so it doesn't necessarily feel grounding the way that something like a hematite would or like i said very sleepy like super sleepy like i feel like how light feels to me it feels much 
just gentle, gentle and soothing and nice. I really, really am enjoying this. So I've been working with that a bit. TV and movies. So I am still working my way through Alias, rewatching that series. It's been a lot of fun. I've had very little time in November to watch any episodes, but I do have been watching a few, still enjoying that. I've also been watching the Not Quite Narwhal series with a friend of mine. That's our Saturday morning cartoon at the moment, and it has been lovely. It's really sweet. The episodes are really short, definitely for a very young audience, but super cute. And I had picked up the Not Quite Narwhal book not that long ago, so it was so, so fun to sort of find a series to watch too, so I've been really enjoying that. Let's talk random stuff. So on the video game front, I have gotten sucked into Stardew Valley. Specifically, I have been playing Stardew Valley on my tablet, on my iPad. I tried to play Stardew Valley on my um, Nintendo Switch, but I tend to play my Nintendo Switch handheld most of the time, and Stardew Valley just seemed really small and crunched up on my Nintendo Switch. I think if I was playing it on the TV, like with a controller, it would probably be a little bit better. But I have to tell you actually, playing on the iPad is amazing. So it's on Apple Arcade, and if you've never played Stardew Valley, I will put some pictures or some video or something of it up on the screen for you. It's The graphics are the reason I never really wanted to get into it because it's got this kind of old, like to me what feels like what video games used to look like. I think there's like a whole, there's a whole genre around games that look like this, but I tend to like games that have newer looking graphics because I actually used to play those games and they just seem old to me. <laughs> But it's grown on me. It's really, really, really cute. What I love about playing it on the iPad though is that there's certain like quality of life things that are done for the iPad version of the game that aren't done on the Switch or on gaming consoles and I'm assuming on PC as well. Like for example, if I'm like cleaning up my farm, it's a farming sim as well as other things, but if I'm cleaning, cleaning up my farm and I click on a tree, it'll automatically use the ax. If I click on a rock, it will automatically use the like pickaxe thing. And if I click on like something, a plant material, it'll automatically use the scythe. Whereas if I'm playing on the computer or with a controller, I have to select the tool I wanna to use each time. And that may not seem like a big deal, but when you're just relaxing and enjoying playing a game like this, doing it like that where I can just tap and have it take care of things, amazing. I also just love that I can tap anywhere on the screen and my character will just find the best route there. Like I don't have to like actually physically move them the whole time. And so it's made a really relaxing game to just have my tablet in my lap. Like I have this little pillowy thing that I should have brought to show you, but I didn't. Maybe I'll show that in December's uh, show and tell. But anyways, there's this pillow thing I can kind of sit it on. And so I can just be really cozy and I can just tap and play and tap and play. And it's very, very like relaxed pace, really fun. There's tons of stuff to do. It feels like the way that Dreamlight Valley, Disney's Dreamlight Valley was feeling for me, but Disney's Dreamlight Valley got really repetitive and kind of boring for me. I don't know if I'll get back into it or not. I've kind of fallen off the Disney Dreamlight Valley wagon. I don't know how you say that. Some other random things I've been enjoying in November. Um, this is a tea that actually came in my, in my November, no, it was an October Witch's Moon Page of Cups subscription box. It's this chocolate chai. Oh my gosh. It is so good. It's a rooibos tea, so it's decaf, naturally decaffeinated, but it literally tastes like chocolate, chocolatey chai, and it's really yummy. Really enjoy that. So I've been enjoying that. Just had my second or third cup. So good. At the Holly Days Christmas Market that Peggy and I went to, I also picked up two candles. Now, if you're in the Supportive Tarot Facebook group, you've always already seen a sneak peek of these because Peggy posted a picture with both of our candle hauls. Her candles were naughty, mine were not, <laughs> but I found this candle. This is by Moody Candle Company. It's a local company in my area. And this is the Frothy Nog of Rumfire candle. And I've just been burning this lately. I've already gotten into it a little bit. You can tell I didn't burn it long enough on my first burn, but this smells like exactly what you would imagine, like hot buttered rum, a little bit eggnoggy, so good. I don't like eggnog, love hot buttered rum. It smells more like that hot buttered rum smell to me, almost like baked goods and like, oh, it's really yummy, it's so good. The other candle I picked up, and I haven't gotten into this yet, I probably won't until the new year, but this is a uh, forest creature. If I showed you the little clip from our little thing, you might have seen where these came from, but this is the, this is forest creature candle. It says its scent profile is fresh forest and the essential oils are Atlas, cedar wood, black pine, and fir needle. And the herbs are cedar wood and pine. It's been hand poured, soy wax, um, 35 hour burn time. So let me just show you. So this one's also a wood wick. It smells so good. It's got this like freshness to it, this almost piney mint kind of profile. It's really, really lovely. So I'm really excited to get into this. I don't remember what the crystal is, but it, might be a 
Mm, anybody know? I'm really bad sometimes with some of them. Anyway, oh, it smells really fresh and yummy. I mean, I might get into it before January. We'll see, but it's got a coziness to it. I don't know. There was something about the freshness of the woods. I'm not or normally drawn to pine based scents. Um, the pine doesn't feel as strong though. I think it's the cedar. It just makes it sweeter. It's really nice. So I'm excited to see how that one burns. We will find out. I, I also snarked two really cool reading cloths from Peggy's recent sewing adventures. Um, so I'm gonna show those. The other ones should be in her shop unless they've sold out already. I think she just listed them. But by the time you see this video, apologies if they're already gone. <laughs> but anyways, this is one of them. Isn't that beautiful? So it's this gorgeous setting. This is, I believe, Josephine Wall based artwork. Um, but we have these little peacocks here and this moon and the stars. I just thought this was so pretty. They're all pretty. There was like four different designs. This was the one that I snarked for myself. It is gorgeous, obsessed. The other one is, you'll understand as soon as you see it. Um, these are really limited. She does have some up in the shop. I think she has a few more left. So once they're sold out, don't panic. I think there's still a few more. But let me just see if I can hold this for you upright. Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what you think it is. It is an astrological wheel. It has the elements, the planetary rulers, the astrological glyphs, the name and the, and the house numbers as well, all the way around. So it's a chart. It's so cool. We were so shocked when we saw this um, at the fabric store. So she picked up, I think, the rest that they had and is whipping them up into reading cloths. So these are backed on, they're like a really rich blue, but they're backed on like a solid black. Really, really pretty. These have a little bit of metallic accent. All this gold has just a little bit of sheen to it as well. So cool. This is gonna be great for casting, for laying out cards. And I already tested, cause I helped her take the product photos for this to go up on her shop. Um, but they actually are the perfect size, like each little quadrant or not quadrant, I guess section. Each little section is the perfect size for a, like a pocket size deck, like a tarot and a tin. I um, staged it in the photos, I think, with the Wild Unknown tarot and a tin. I've cast on it already. I, oof, very excited about that. Very excited about it. I somehow skipped over beauty. I, I don't know why I'm, so it's out of order. It's going in a slightly different spot, but let's talk about beauty things. So let's talk nail polish. <laughs> Uh, pretty restrained in November, I will say. I wore this shade. This is a nail polish by Penelope Luz Cosmetics, and this is called Avatar. Ooh. Okay, there we go. So I don't know if the camera's going to pick up on the, the shade, like variety, but it is kind of a multi-chrome purple. I don't know how to describe it. And my lighting is like a little bit dark, but hopefully you get the vibe. If you saw me in like a shimmery kind of true purple with some shift in it, that was this. I wore this early in November. And then I jumped into Gem. This is an old favorite by Zoya. I've talked about this one before. So this one is kind of a wine color, but it's got gold shift in it. I feel like top down may have been better for this but hopefully you get the gist and then I wore Cheshire Cat from the Alice collection which looks a little bit like that so it's another purpley I, I was basically just kind of doubling down on these purple and berry shades so like when you see them together you're like you're like oh they actually look quite different in this way right we have like sort of this like kind of true purple we have a darker purple this one looks a lot more burgundy in this light, especially compared to the others when the shifts show up. I can't hold things up this way very well. Anyways, those are the three shades. This one is Moon Cat, this one is Penelope Cruz, and this one is Zoya. But I spent the last couple of weeks just wearing, this is sort of my, when I'm taking a break from nail polish, nail polish, if that makes any sense. It is an, an OPI Nail Envy color, and it's called Bubble Bath. It's kind of a peachy pink. I'm not in love with this shade. I don't think I would repurchase this, but I'm trying to use it up. So I put this straight on my nails, no base coat. And then I put um, a, a thin layer of this over top. Now this is Mystic, which yes, I bought for its name. This is for Moon Cat. This makes the bubble bath color look really pretty. 
it gives it just some of this pinky kind of greeny shift which is really awesome. And so it, it makes my nails feel pretty, but they're very light colored. And so I can wear this usually for about a week and a half. Even when it starts to chip, it's not super crazy obvious, which is awesome. So that's it for nail polish. Lip gloss. I'm wearing this right now. I had to get this. I am obsessed with the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm lip gloss. It's my favorite formula. It's amazing. And this is their limited edition holiday shade. And it's a pinky... How do I describe this? Like a pinky, pinky, it, you know what? It's this nail polish and a lip gloss. Look at that. It's kind of the same thing. It's pink with a little bit of a green shift, but it's very pale. Like I'm wearing it now, you can't really tell. Like if I just put, you might be able to tell more. There's a little bit of shift, but mostly it's just like a good one to put on top of anything. So that's why I got it. I love it. It's comfy. It has that really yummy, like, I don't know why I'm sniffing the outside of the container, but it has that, that comfy texture and it's kind of like stays on my lips for a long time. It's not gritty or anything. It like makes my lips feel like nice and plumped up. It smells really good. It smells really good. It's kind, it's not like a, a vanilla. It's like a, I think it's like a peachy fruit punch kind of scent. It's nice. Anyways, eyeshadow. Um, one brief honorable mention and then I'm gonna talk about what I have been wearing all of November. We'll probably wear all of December and probably wear all of January and beyond as well. But I did make one exception. So our honorable mention first, I had a photo shoot actually about a week or two ago for uh, an author photo for my book for Llewellyn. And I'll probably have an updated like photo for my social media and my website and all that kind of stuff. But for that photo session, I did my own makeup and I went with my classic like tried and true. This is the Natasha Denona Glam palette. This is like my will not let me down, will not fail me. I can create a nice cool toned like eyeshadow look and it can look really delicate, but really professional, really pretty, really sparkly. Uh, I love this. So I used mostly these three shades here to build the look. And I like to use this center look or the center shade here just for, um, like lash line definition and stuff. But this is a really great, like, it's like my go-to, I guess you could say like natural look palette. It's not very, it's, I don't make natural looks, but I mean, least colorful. It's my go-to least colorful palette. And I love it. I love the shades in here. I love the way that they look and they make me feel very put together, which is what I needed for the photo shoot. So that's what I wore for that. So a little bit of an honorable mention for that. But what I've really been obsessed with in November and December, is the Danessa Myricks Lightworks Volume 5 IM Palette. This makes my glamour magic, um, self-love heart happy for its theming because the entire premise is like I am, like you look in the mirror and you say I am, like it says I am like right under the mirror. And then each of these shades is named things like resilient, radiant, centered, protected, evolving, loved, healed, inspiring, abundant, enough, unbreakable, powerful, etc., etc. Do you get the gist? It makes me very happy. Um, so the theming on it is really great, but what's really great is these freaking shades. If you've seen me wearing eyeshadow at all lately, what I'm wearing today is the one of the more subtle looks. I'm wearing mostly this color Loved here in the center, this one right there. Um, but if you've seen me wear shades that seem to really pop, I think I wore the greens for uh, Three Fat Readers, I'm trying to remember. Um, Basically, if you're seeing me wear eyeshadow that you can really, really tell I'm wearing and it's sparkly, it's probably this. These are mostly duochrome shades. I'm gonna see if I can get it to shift. Yeah, you can see, see? See the color I'm wearing right now, this this loved color, I think you can see shift. No, it's mostly this one you're seeing shift. Um, fearless shifts from like orange to green. Do you see the shifting happening? I don't know if you can tell. Let me just, let me just show you. Okay, so I'm gonna show you Loved, which I'm wearing on my eyes right now because holy crap, do you see that? Like it is, mm, okay, let me just, you know I'm gonna wanna do this. Okay, so that's Loved. Look at that, that's one swipe. I didn't even try that hard. And I don't know if you can tell, but it shifts, like it shifts, it's got green reflect in it. Oh my God. Um, I've also worn Fierce, which is that one. Let me just one swipe. That's fierce. So loved, fierce. Let me pick, I wore the green one, you'll recognize it. This one is called Abundant. I'm just pulling from the middle. They're all gorgeous, but there's Abundant. I mean, like, are you kidding? 
and it's a pinky swatch, which you know is bad, but look at the reflect, I can't. And then let's go with Brave. Brave is really unique. It's kind of sheer, but that's Brave. It's kind of got blue, periwinkle, purple. I really am not ready to be done. Okay, let's grab Healed, I've also worn that one. There's Healed. Uh, let's put that that way. Oh my god, this one just goes and goes. Like, can you, do you see what's happening? It's wild, it's crazy. I can't stop looking at the viewfinder, I'm so sorry, but like, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go wipe those off, but just incredible. I love doing fun like eyeshadow looks. I also love glamour magic with makeup, so this like ticks both boxes. Sold, sold. Okay, let me flip to top down and we'll take a look at books and decks. Legends and Lattes is the Unicorn Fam book club pick for November, December. I finished it in November. I'm going to save all of my many, many detailed thoughts for our Unicorn Fam wrap up, but let me just say I am obsessed. I've discovered a whole new genre. Uh, I'm gonna call this a teaser, but I had to at least mention it because holy crap, I love this so much. So if you have been curious about it, um, if you're curious about the genre cozy fantasy, I mean, just pick it up. You, you won't regret it. I don't think you'll regret it. <laughs> I also made time for some other fun reads in November. So I actually was sent a couple of zines from Wesley over at 22 Zines. Oops. So I was actually sent a couple of zines from Wesley at 22 Zines. He actually sent me, um, well, I'll do one at a time here, okay. He actually sent me The Chaos of Enlightenment by Christy C. Road. Now this is not an entirely family friendly, <laughs> the imagery in here is pretty intense, but it's got, uh, if you don't know who Christy C. Road is, by the way, creator of the New World Tarot, I think is what it's called. Why am I, I'll put, the, I'll put the picture of her deck up on the screen for you. Um, but this is a, uh, a journey through the energy centers of the body. So I'll show you the root chakra because this one's pretty tame. Um, you get this like really beautiful write up on the left and then this gorgeous artwork on the right that really highlights the color of the chakra. This is fabulous. This is a great little zine and I'm so, so happy that I have it. I'll also show you the throat chakra. Just very, very cool. So I read this whole thing through, definitely keeping it, love this little zine. And if you get a chance, I think she was selling them on her website, you can still scoop one up, highly recommend. I also read one of Wesley's zines, the Unfair Maiden number five. This is the Out of Touch Thursday issue. And this was so much fun. There was a bunch of My Little Pony stuff in here, which was great, including a really fabulous little bit of writing on Pinkie Pie and deserving respect. I was also charmed to find out that Pinkie, that Fluttershy is actually Wesley's favorite my Little Pony, she's mine too, but Pinkie Pie comes in a pretty close second for me. So there was some great stuff in here, but what I wasn't expecting to find as I read this through. I was just sitting down, kind of curling up with it one evening. And Wesley does a tarot reading for whoever might be reading this zine. And let me tell you, I posted about it on my Instagram stories because that reading like called me out and like was exactly what I needed to hear at the time I happened to pick this up. And Wesley sent this to me quite some time ago. So I finally just had the time to sit down and read it. And it happened to be the perfect time for that reading. So I was super uh, touched by that and it just hit in all the right places. So that was a fun zine as well. I also read two of my unicorn butt books that I had picked up in my like unicorn book haul, which I shared earlier on my channel. So I read the very short, entirely true history of unicorns. This was a fun read by Sarah Laskow. If you've got somebody in your life who's into unicorns, especially a younger person, and they want like a primer on like all the unicorn things, I thought this was really well done. It gives you bits of history. It talks about the unicorn tapestries. It talks about different places that there are unicorn um, sightings or tales rather about unicorns. Folklore goes into them talks about everything from those sort of historical bits. It even has a bit here, which I flagged. <laughs> this matters to me because I didn't find out about the unicorn constellation until about six months ago. And this actually does show up in my tarot deck um, in a form. It doesn't look identical to this, but it's very, very similar. It's the same constellation, but there's some, I've seen different versions with different numbers of stars, but that's probably details you don't care about. In any case, I didn't know there was a unicorn constellation, but I was really delighted to find a reference to it in here, even though I'd already found out about it on my own months ago. Um, 
And just other stuff here. There's even a little bit here about pop culture references to food, the unicorn uh, frappuccino at Starbucks, the unicorn Fruit Loops, which I have also had, the unicorn uh, elote, which is a uh, street corn, seems kind of icky to me, but I mean, it's a thing. So yeah, there's stuff here about unicorn poop. It, it was great. This was a really, really fun read. And then I also read a book, which I would say is arguably pretty similar. I don't think you necessarily need both, but I also read Unicorn Lovers Only. Um, this is written by Penelope Gwynn and it's history, mythology, facts, and more. I just, I thought the cover and format of this was really sweet. I really liked the artwork in this one. Um, and what did I flag in here? I flagged a couple things. So let's see, I flagged Unicorns Then and Now. I thought this was a really great timeline of unicorn lore. This was really great. And then I also flagged, ah, there was a really great, there were some uh, actual little stories that were sort of rewritten or retold in here. And I really loved reading the story about Rhiannon and the unicorn tale here was just really, really enjoyable. So I really loved reading this. This was fabulous. Um, so I really, this was a fun read. I loved the artwork. I just, I found it really charming. The little last bit here has a lot to do with like capturing a unicorn or befriending a unicorn or just stuff that like is more fanciful, but the first half was really, really lovely. So again, really fun. And I just love the artwork on the cover. Let's talk decks. So let's talk about the Emperor's New Tarot. In truth, this is just a blank tarot card set that you can order on Amazon, but I was really excited about this. For starters, it actually comes, it was about $10 US, it comes in a tuck box inside of another tuck box. So when you first get it, the tuck box that has all the like, UPC or the branding, like the actual product information is on the outside. And then when you open it up, you actually get a full blank um, tuck box. That's actually not too shabby. Like it actually has a little bit of structure to it. It's basic. It's pretty much the same thing you'd expect. Um, it does have the flap on the bottom, so you will have to fight with that a little bit, but of course that that's fine. It's got a bit of gloss or sheen on the, I don't know if I can get it to show, my, my lights aren't going to show it, but there's a bit of light uh, sheen on the outside of the box. So you'd probably want to use something that's not going to smear on that. And then the cards themselves, the backs, or what I assume are the backs, there we go, now you can see the reflect. Can I get it to show? It's about the same on the box. But anyways, you've got a kind of a glossy back. Again, that might be tricky to illustrate the backs, but the fronts, or what I assume are the fronts, are matte. So I think you could actually draw on these with colored pencil or marker or whatever. Um, and actually, it fe it feels cardstock-wise about the same as like a standard, like say Llewellyn cardstock. So it actually shuffles really nice and it doesn't feel overly flimsy. Now to me, this is a huge step up from what I did when I first created my Tarot Bootcamp for Beginners course. Um, I just basically um, create a printable template where you can print out the cards um, and put them on pr like printable cardstock, but printable cardstock is like very, very, very light paper. This would have been so much better for this project. Um, so just something to keep in mind because I certainly uh, would have appreciated having something like this when it was time to create my Tarot Bootcamp for Beginners deck. So if you were thinking about getting Tarot Bootcamp or if you have taken Tarot Bootcamp, this might be something to convert your stuff over into. I will probably do that with mine at some point just so that I have this copy that is a little sturdier and easier to shuffle and actually work with. But for 10 bucks, I actually thought that was a pretty decent little product. So um, all of our joking about Emperor's New Tarot aside, this is a great set of blank cards if you just wanna do your own thing. Um, I'm hopeful that the cardstock on the Low Scarabeo Invisible Tarot is of a similar quality and has the same kind of thing, but they, they actually have printed backs and then they have the titles printed on the face of the cards. So are not even titles, I think it's like colored borders and like symbols for what the suit like and the number or whatever is. So yeah, that is just blank tarot cards. I will have this link down below. I thought it was a great buy on Amazon in all honesty. <laughs> And it's only 10 bucks compared to like the 25 or 30 or whatever for the the, blank, the Invisible Tarot by Los Garabale. So other decks I've been working with, I honestly spent so much time in both October and November with the Vampire Tarot, I, or the Tarot Vampires rather by Ian Daniels. I did actually modify my deck. I edged it in this gorgeous red. Um, and I love how that turned out, by the way. Um, and it did help a bit. There is some chipping because I use this, these cards, like I said, a lot, a lot in um, October and November. So really happy that the edging kind of gave it new life. This deck is, 
I don't know how to describe my relationship with this deck. I'll say this, the study, as you can see from all of the flags in the book, the study of the book itself is so worth doing. There's so much good stuff in here and I really got a lot out of this experience. Like I annotated the crap out of this guidebook had a really, really incredible experience studying this, this deck with the Unicorn Fam. Would not take it back for the world. I will say that the deck itself still sort of sits in this funny space for me where I'm not sure. Like it's got so much thought, it's got so much astrology, and I really did enjoy using it a lot in October. Once Halloween was over, and this is probably just the way my brain works though, I was kind of getting over it. There, there's a lot though of sensuality and passion in this deck and I can see a space for it in my practice still, but I have a feeling that this is definitely going to remain a deck that I typically only pull out around the dark half of the year or specifically during spooky season or October-ish. Um, but it's a gorgeous, fun deck to work with, but most importantly to me is just how rich the guidebook is with information. If you are curious about Kabbalah, there's a really wonderful like primer on Kabbalah in here that I think is really great for just getting a basic understanding of the Sephira. And I just, I don't know, I really, like I said, I got a lot out of the study of it. And I would recommend a study of it if you're curious about it. I think it's well worth doing. Now, that being said, if the cards are not your, your jam, you can totally study the book by just picking up the Fool's Dog app, which I believe has the entirety of Fast Phantasmagoria, which is the accompanying book. And so you can still read the book uh, via the app and it's probably much more affordable to do it that way if you're pretty sure you're not going to work with the cards. Really I spent most of my study with the book but I did work with the deck regularly and it gave fabulous readings. I just feel like this is where this is where my um, where the benefit was for me in the study. Probably the other decks that I worked with the most through November is the Solitary Witch Oracle. I'm sure I've been talking about this a ton. I really enjoyed just pulling for myself like a single card from here and then reading from the guidebook. So if you haven't seen this, it's a Lucy Cavendish deck. It's illustrated by Lady Victoria. So the artwork is by Lady Victoria. And I have a feeling it was pre-existing um, artwork that was just paired with these various sayings and so forth in the deck. I really thought this wasn't gonna work for me. I got it because I loved the backs. I thought they were fabulous. Um, but then I used this in member readings in October and it just blew us away. I'm sure I talked about this during my show and tell last month, but ever since uh, working with this with the guidebook specifically in the October member readings, I have had this on my reading table ready and available. And I would regularly come sit down at my reading table and just pull a card and read the guidebook and have just this really great experience with it. I also paired it with um, this deck combo. This is the Book of Shadows box set uh, by Barbara Moore. So I was working with the As Above and the So Below decks together. So what I would do, this is what I, my practice typically looked like in October when I was doing this at home, is I would pull a, a card from the Book of, or excuse me, from the Solitary Witch Oracle, and then I would pull one from the As Above deck and one from the So Below deck. And li literally this would be an as above, so below reading. So they worked really, really well this way. If you're not familiar with these, the as above deck has a lot of card renamings. It's got a really spiritual bent. Cards are renamed after different aspects of a witchy practice. They're also just in general, very kind of high vibe feeling. Very much feels like a glimpse into the spiritual realm. And then the so below deck feels almost exactly the opposite. The art style is different. It feels very like, almost like colored pencil, like very earthy and very mundane. And yet there's all these like little hints of the magical in it. There's, I did do, use re reversals with it sometimes, but there are like little water spirits, air spirits, earth spirits, and fire spirits throughout this deck. But I really enjoy doing that as above, so below reading. And so this has sat on my reading table for that purpose for now. It's got to be pretty much all of October and November again. Really, really enjoying it. So if I mentioned these also in my October show and tell, that is why. But really enjoying that practice a lot. I'm finally putting it away for now because there's other things I want to work with. But they're probably going to be coming right back out to my reading table before too much time has passed. Really recommend all of these. And then finally, the Sacred Creator's Oracle. This has really been holding my hand <laughs> lately with all the projects that I've been working on. I do really, really enjoy this deck. Um, it is on that Hay House cardstock that just likes to like get a little misshapen on me. I don't know what it is about this, but it just does not hold its shape 
super well, but it's working fine. Like it shuffles really nicely, but it's just the cards just like hold whatever shape the shuffle gives them. I'm having this problem with all of the Hay House decks lately and it's just a little bit frustrating. I'm hoping that they upgrade their their cardstock again at some point. They used to have glorious, glorious, buttery, yummy cardstock and it went away and I'm so sad. But anyway, this deck though, the, con the, su the substance, the content of this deck is really, really good and I find it excellent for supporting me while I'm working on my creative projects, go figure. Um, it's been really great to have handy while I'm working on my guidebook, while I'm working on my deck. It's just been amazing. So really, really love this and I've worked with it a ton. Now I didn't bring my copy in here to show um, and I'm kind of careful to avoid too many spoilers, but I can't probably ever go a month again without mentioning that the Unicorn's Journey Tarot is a forever favorite. I actually have a little hand printed version that I keep in this tiny little jewelry box. I'm just gonna make sure there's no spoilers. No, there isn't, okay. So I printed this for myself. Um, but look it, I keep this at my reading table just in case. But the Unicorn's Journey Tarot, this is badly printed, by the way, because it's just printed on that same paper that I did the um, Tarot Boot Camp deck on, that, like, printable cardstock, but it's really just paper. I just, I love this deck. I've been really working with it a lot. I use it now in my member readings, so I'm putting it through its paces, and as I've been working on the guidebook, I'm just, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with these characters. I'm obsessed with this world. I love, 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 love this deck. So this is my little, like my little personal mini copy that I just keep just in case there's always one close at hand. So I've got one that lives in my bag and goes with me to work, one test print. I've got another test print that lives um, actually in the living room right next to where I do a lot of my video editing and live streams and stuff. So it's always handy there. And this one lives in here in my reading table. So like literally there's almost nowhere I can go where I don't have a copy of the Unicorn's Journey Tarot for me to like just sort of work with, play with, etc. That is it y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for my November show and tell. I would love to hear what you've been up to. So drop a comment down below. Let us know what you've been loving and enjoying in the month of November. As always, thank you so, so much for hanging out and spending your time here. And an extra big thank you goes out to my Unicorn Fam channel members. Y'all, thank you so much for your support of the channel. It means so, so much. Just as a reminder, if you are interested in contributing to tarot tidbits and takeaways, drop me a message. Drop me an instant message on Facebook. Drop me an Instagram post, uh, DM, whatever makes sense for you. And I will share some information on how you can contribute to that if you are interested. But that episode of Tarot Tidbits and Takeaways should be coming out very, very soon. So keep your eyes on the channel. Anyway, thank you all so, so much. And until the next video, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.